Good morning. The Congregation of Zion Lutheran Church in downtown Hamilton, Ohio, welcomes our Facebook and radio audience to our 10 o'clock Easter service. Our services are also available on the zionhamilton.org website. If you're in need of prayer or want to have our weekly service bulletin emailed to you, please contact our church office at 513-863-5774 or email us at zionlutheranoffice at gmail.com. Leading the service today is presider and preacher, Vicar Patty Eaton, assisting minister, Pastor John Mittermeyer. Our music will be by Bill Seal and Barb Johnson, and the lector will be Anita Snyder. We have a lot of special music for you today. The first one will be Jesus Christ is Risen Today with the Zion Bell Choir, followed by Alleluia, which was by Mozart with soloist Virginia Levy. Uh, then will come Since by God, Since by Man Came Death by Handel, sung by our Zion Choir. And then we'll finish our service singing the Hallelujah Chorus with our congregation. We now begin with our prelude. Hallelujah, Christ has risen. He has risen indeed. Hallelujah. Happy Easter to you all. Just a few announcements. I'm just going to uh, look at this week. Monday, the office is closed. And on Tuesday, we have prayer with Patty at 11, Young at Heart at 1145, and the book club at 6 o'clock. So Tuesday is a very busy day for us. Lou Robinson, unfortunately, is home ill this morning. Hope you get better, Lou. I will make his announcement for him. Today is the fifth Sunday, so there will be a second collection, and that will be for the Band of Brothers. Are there any other announcements that you would like to share with the congregation? If not, please let us prepare for worship by enjoying the prelude. <laughs>
Thank you, Bill. Rainy Easter morning, but it's time for the Christian weather forecast. Our God reigns. The sun has risen and shines gloriously. Let's give thanks for our baptism this morning. I invite you to stand and join with me in the order of service. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the wellspring of grace, our Easter and our joy. Amen. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Hallelujah. Immersed in the promises of baptism, let us give thanks for what God has done for us. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your voice thundered over the deep and water became the essence of life. Adam and Eve beheld Eden's verdant rivers. The ark carried your creation through the flood into a new day. Miriam led the dancing as your people passed through the sea into freedom's land. In a desert pool, the Ethiopian official entered your boundless baptismal life. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Hallelujah. At the river, your beloved son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you opened the floodgates of your reconciling love, freeing us to live as Easter people. We rejoice with glad hearts, giving all honor and praise to you. Through the risen Christ, our source of living water, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. of victory for our God. Alleluia. be with you and also with you let us pray oh God you gave your only son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption and by his glorious resurrection you delivered us from the power of death make us die every day to sin that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection through your son Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated.
The first lesson is from the 10th chapter of Acts. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Word of God, word of life. We will now read responsively Psalm 118. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let Israel now declare. God's mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song. And has become my salvation. Shouts of rejoicing and salvation echo in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. I shall not die but live. And declare the works of the Lord. The Lord indeed punished me sorely. But they did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. This is the gate of the Lord. Here the righteous may enter. I give thanks to you, for you have answered me. And you have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. The second lesson is from the 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I hand it on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas and then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, 
but the grace of God that is in with is with me. Whether then I was, whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. Word of God, word of life. Gospel according to St. Mark, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. The resurrection of Jesus is announced, and the response is one of terror and amazement. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus' body. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun has, had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for, t for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of our Lord. You, Would the youth come forward, please? We're doing something very different here in our church this morning. We normally tell our youth not to run in church. Well, today we're doing a relay for Jesus, so we're going to be doing a little bit of running. And what we have as a baton is this wonderful picture of Jesus smiling. Now, you had asked to be first. What you guys need to do is place yourselves down the aisle. You can take off your shoes. Because we have to run to each other. So some of you place yourself down the center aisle, some down either of the side aisles. And just go wherever you want. Go a few feet down that way. Here. I'll help you. Come down this way. You stand there. You go, okay, you can stand here. You go down there a few feet. Okay. So space yourself out a little bit because we have to run a little bit to each other. So space yourself out. Okay. Now this is a wonderful picture of a smiling Jesus. Jesus did smile. He even laughed. And what we will do is we pass the baton. I will do it first. I am not going to run. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ has risen today. Now run. Now speak loudly. Okay, shout. Like when you're on the playground. Turn around and you go. Jeremiah, why don't you come over here so somebody can run this way. All right, run to Jeremiah. Now shout. What do you want to say? You can say, yay, Jesus. Okay, yay, Jesus. All right, Jeremiah, you run over there to Gloria. Yay. Oh, he's going to run. Here we go. Say it loudly. Say it loudly. Okay, Gloria, you run. Say, speak loudly now. Yay, yay Jesus. Yay, hallelujah. Come back to me, Glo Victoria. All right, go sit. Yay, run, Victoria. She had the longest run of all. What are you going to say to me, Gloria? Jesus. Yay, Jesus. All right, everybody come sit down. 
A relay race for Jesus. We're passing on the good news that Jesus Christ has risen today. Do you think you can do that when you see people today? Tell them, hallelujah, Christ has risen. That's how we proclaim the good news. And isn't that what the gospel said? The, the young man in white told them to go tell. They didn't tell, but you did. So let's all say a prayer to Jesus. Can you bow your heads? Heavenly Father, thank you so much for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to save us. We so appreciate your love and your support that you show us throughout our lives. Please be with us as we go into the world this week. Help us to proclaim your good news, that hallelujah, Jesus Christ has risen today. Amen. Thank you so much. They didn't run as fast as I expected them to run. <laughs> I got so many years of being told not to run in church. <laughs> that sort of sticks with you, doesn't it? Can everybody see me here or do you want me to move into the center? Am I good here? Okay. I have to have a sip of water first. May the joy of the resurrected Lord be with you always. Jesus is dead and taken down off of the cross. The time of his death was about three hours before the start of the Sabbath. The law of Moses required Sabbath rest, which prevented Jesus' followers from preparing his body the way the custom was. Joseph of Arimathea and others buried Jesus without having completely prepared his body for burial. For that reason, Mary Magdalene Mary, the mother of James, and Salome went to the tomb early in the morning, the morning after the Sabbath, hoping to complete the process. In the scripture, it talks about what they were saying. They were worried about that great big huge stone blocking the entrance to the tomb. I believe they were, had much more trepidation in their hearts and in their minds than just worrying about the huge stone. I believe they were grieving. They had seen Jesus brutally killed, and they were grieving his loss. Also, in other scripture, it says that Roman guards were stationed around the tomb to prevent anybody from getting into the tomb and stealing Jesus' body. So having an altercation with Roman soldiers would not have been a nice experience. And they might have been worried about that. Also, the fact that Jesus' body was not prepared correctly, after all those hours being in the tomb, what kind of condition was it in? So this might not have been the routine preparation of the body with their spices as what they were used to. So all of these things, I think, made them anxious. And I think that they're trepidation was quite high. But they had no way of knowing the surprises that awaited them. The first surprise was that the fact that that great big huge stone had been rolled away. But that surprise also brought with it some, uh, probably a few scary feelings. Who rolled it away? And then could somebody actually be in the tomb? Like, could it have been thieves who rolled the stone away? And mightn't they still be in the tomb? Are we really safe? Surprise number two. They did enter the tomb, whatever trepidation they felt. It doesn't say whether they emptied it cautious, entered it cautiously or if they hurried in. But they went into the tomb, and lo and behold, they saw a young man dressed in white and sitting at the right-hand side of the tomb. I bet I would be a little bit scared if I saw that. And they probably were as well. And the young man said to them in verse 5, and no, in verse 5 it says they were alarmed. Now this young man in white is not identified in this gospel as an angel. Other gospels do identify 
this young man as an angel. He exhibits the behavior of an angel when he knew that they were alarmed. He said to them what many angels say when they have an experience meeting a human. Usually they say, do not be afraid. But these ladies were past just mere fear. And they were into the alarm phase. And this young man said to them, do not be alarmed. So in my estimation, this young man was behaving like an angel would. The young man knew that they were looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who had been crucified. He shared that Jesus was not in the tomb because he had been raised. He reinforced these words by actually pointing to where Jesus' body had been laid. And then, in verse 7, the young man gave them a divine message. This could have only been a message from God. A message from Jesus himself when he left the tomb. And what the angel said was, But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. I find it interesting that throughout the Bible, when Jesus performed miracles, he usually told people, Don't tell anybody. But his miracle of his resurrection, his messenger instructed the women to go and tell. The angel handed these women a message that contained the weight of the world. They just didn't realize it. The terror and amazement that had seized them prevented them from sharing this good news. That's what the scripture says. They were so afraid that they did not tell. One pastor who I spoke to about this passage said to me, eventually the story was shared, and I love this verbiage, there was a post-resurrection rendezvous in Galilee. Love it. I think this particular gospel is probably not what we expect on Easter Sunday. It doesn't give us the glorious Jesus Christ has risen today. We got that with that wonderful music we had. But the gospel doesn't give that to us this morning. I think what it's giving us is a gospel for us to contemplate and for us to think on. There's no resurrection celebration in this gospel. The angel merely says that Jesus had risen. It's just a statement of fact and a reminder of the meeting location that Jesus had already told them about. It's almost a natural assumption from this that the resurrection happened, but it's not really proclaimed gloriously. One theologian, when he read this gospel, said that he felt that Mark's ending was an invitation to Easter ministry. It invites us to break the silence and proclaim the good news which is what Christian discipleship is. It's an Easter ministry sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. As we go forward in our Easter ministry, we might feel that same type of terror that the women at the tomb felt on that first Easter Sunday. According to Mark's gospel, Jesus is always a step ahead of us. He would be in Galilee ahead of the disciples waiting for them. He will be with us. Whenever your, wherever your path in life takes you, Jesus walks with you. God loves you so much that he sacrificed his only begotten son to save you. And he will always be with you. Our God is a special God. He came down from heaven to save us. Hallelujah. Christ has risen. Please, please join me in singing hymn number 385, Good Christian Friends Rejoice and Sing. Please stand.
with the whole church in every time and place. Let us confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He, he will, will come, come again, again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. You may take this opportunity to kneel. Holy God, we pray for the body of Christ, the church, including neighboring St. Matthew's Lutheran Church in Dartown and our Jewish brothers and sisters at Beth Israel Congregation in Hamilton, where the church is persecuted, protected, where the church is privileged, grant it humility, where the church is fractured, heal it. Guide us all to embody Christ's love in the world. God of grace. Living God, we pray for the earth, your good creation. Join our prayers with the branches lifted in praise and roaring waters of new life, that together we may proclaim Easter hope. God of grace, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we pray for all peoples and nations, free oppressed communities from occupation, exploitation, and abuse. Teach leaders your way of justice. Empower peacemakers and all who work to end violence and strife. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Liberating God, we pray for people everywhere who long for good news. Roll away the stones that keep people from living with dignity and wholeness. Breathe new life and hope into people struggling to make it through each day and for all with illness. We pray today for Patrice, Maggie, Gail, Glenn, Clay, Joyce, Hillary, Joni, Mike, Michael, Irene, Ron, Pat, Emily, Tom, Sonia, Libby, Donna, Wanda, Dennis, Manette, Julia, Levi, Jim, Barb, Tanya, Don, Larry, Dick, Grandma Betty, Howard, Lou, Bob Campbell, Wayne, Patty, Elmira, Lee and Barbara, Jim, Rob, Ed, Courtney, Bryn, Patsy, Earl, Bob, Ron, and Greg. And we pray for Catherine DeBoard at the death of her mother yesterday. Comfort her with the promise of the resurrection victory. And we include our homebound member, Juanita Tudor. 
God of grace. Loving God, we pray for this community of faith and for your spirit in our midst. Feed us at your Easter table and fill us with your wisdom that we may serve and care for others. God of grace. Eternal God, we remember those who have gone before us in death, especially John Donne and all whose ministry in the arts inspired generations to faith. Renew our trust in your promises that we live with joyful courage and compassion. God of grace, hear our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love. Through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. The peace of the risen Christ be with you always. And also with you. I think there must be at least ten of those names that we prayed for who are present with us this morning. Search them out and also reach out to Catherine who is with us this morning.
Let us pray. Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Living and loving God, we praise you for creating the heavens and the earth. We bless you for bringing Noah and his family through the waters of the flood, for freeing your people Israel from the bonds of slavery, and for sending your Son to be our Redeemer. We give you thanks for Jesus, who lived among us, healed the sick, fed the hungry, and with a love stronger than death, gave his life for others. In that night in which he was betrayed, Jesus our Lord took bread from the Passover meal. He gave thanks for it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after the supper, he took the cup. And after giving thanks, he gave it for all of them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life-giving death and glorious resurrection, we await your promised life for all this dying world. Breathe your spirit on us and on this bread and cup. Carry us in your arms from death to life that we may live as your chosen ones, clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. <laughs> Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. The risen Christ is made known to us in the breaking of the bread. Come and eat at the Lord's table. Zion Lutheran practices Eucharistic hospitality. Communing members of all other Christian fellowships are invited to share in this meal of grace today.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Alleluia. Christ is risen. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope, bless you now and always. Amen. Amen. You're welcome to join the choir in singing the Alleluia Chorus.
I would like to thank everyone who participated in worship this morning, especially our wonderful choir and the bell choir. Shall we give them a round of applause, please? <laughs> Alleluia, go in peace, rejoice and be glad.